What is up everybody? This is Michael Filesage checking in here today. I hope you guys are doing great. So today I want to make a video about bag fruiting and boy, this video has been a long time coming. And uh, if you, if you guys have followed my channel for any amount of time, then you will probably know that I'm a big fan of using Ziploc bags as fruiting chambers. Now, I didn't pioneer this idea. Uh, I first learned about using Ziploc bags to fruit from Bodhisatta on the Asmari. And the other texts, the, the other ones that I'm doing right now, well, actually not that one. That's actually my original. But these ones uh, are actually from a guy called Fatster, who is a TC, a trusted cultivator on the Asmari. So... Uh, thank you to those guys for these awesome ideas of using Ziploc bags as fruiting chambers because as far as I understand, these guys were sort of the pioneers in that. So then again, the idea of fruiting in a bag is an old one. I mean, before the monotub tech, the main bulk tech was basically to use bags, the sandbags, right? So this, uh, so, you know, after sandbags, then the monotubs came and then the monotubs became popular and then shoe boxes. And now people nowadays are going back to bags. We see that with all-in-one grow bags. We see that with a hoodie tech, you know. Uh, we see that with Ziploc bags. We see people basically fruiting inside grain bags with a, with, with a proper filter for allowing more FAE and all that and all sorts of things. So I'm very glad to see that bag fruiting is coming back. It, no, it's not new. It's been done before. It's just like with everything else, it's a cycle. And it's coming back right now, it seems. So, and I'm a big fan of bag fruiting because it saves a lot of space. Uh, you don't need to have a bunch of tubs and uh, it's very simple. So basically, uh, let's get to this video. So I have a few varieties, a few different styles, and I wanna make some comparisons and tell you guys about my experiences regarding these uh, different types of bag fruiting techs. So uh, to begin with, I'll start with this. This is the most basic form of bag fruiting. These guys, all of these guys are grass lover species. Okay, not core lovers. Core lovers are a lot easier to fruit with bags because they don't require as much FAE. But to to basically account for FAE, there's a few things that I'm doing here with a bag text, which I will get into particularly with this one. It's pretty interesting. Uh, so with these guys, I've, I've used this kind of tech with a Ziploc bag over the jar tech for both core lovers and grass lovers to success, to great success. Um, but right now I'm doing Mexican grass lovers and these guys are a little bit harder to fruit than, than Florida grass lovers, which I've done with this kind of tech before. So these are Mexican grass lovers. And as you can see, um, there's not all that much mycelium poking out. It's been cased a long time ago and there's still no fruits. Same kind of thing here, actually even less on there. So basically, uh, no, no real progress with this. Now you can see they're actually forming some truffles, right? Not much. They don't form nearly as much or nearly as big truffles as, um, Florida grass lovers, these Mexican grass lovers. So it's been actually, they've been cased for half a month now and there is still nothing. Now this guy is also the same. Mexican grass lovers that I made from the same spawn jar. I just spawned it to bulk inside these little containers here. So they're all the same. They're all spawned and cased at the same time. Yet here we are actually starting to have pins. Now I don't want to show too much, but you guys get the idea. There are actually pins. You could clearly see that there is a lot more mycelium as well on the, um, on the casing layer. It's a lot more colonized. There's a lot of primordia and they are starting to fruit, which is fantastic. So, same time, but different results. So, what's the difference? Well, clearly the environmental conditions are different. So, I'm gonna get into what I did with this bag. So what I did here is, as you can notice, there is a lot of core on the bottom. And that's, the idea that I had was basically to recreate a shotgun fruiting chamber type setup inside a Ziploc bag. So this is the biggest size that you can get. This is two gallon Ziploc bag and you know, with again, with core lovers and stuff and with a certain species like Florida grass lovers rather than Mexican grass lovers, they're a lot less finicky. They're a lot more happy to fruit, no matter the conditions. With core lovers, if, if, you, if you colonize a jar like this and you keep the lid on, you will get fruits all over, right? Like on the side, you get a bunch of side fruits. That's normal. With these guys, with these uh, Mexican grass lovers, they are a lot more finicky. They require more FAE. They require more humidity at the same time. So you got two conflicting things that you need to maintain at a high level, right? 
because usually if you increase the FAE, then generally you're going to get less uh, moisture. And then you increase the moisture, then you get less FAE. It's like, so that's the balance. And that's why automated setups are generally really uh, good for these kinds of more finicky uh, species like pool lovers. But I want to find ways where you don't have to use it. And I know that you can use a shotgun fruiting chamber to fruit these species, including pool lovers. Now that's not to say that it's impossible to fruit these guys inside, say, a monotub or a shoebox. It's been done, I've done it myself, but what happens is because of the more limited FAE, that means that you're going to have less happier fruits. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get as healthy a fruit as possible, have their caps open larger, that kind of thing. Not to mention, it's not as reliable in terms of getting results if you were to use a tub-like setup with these guys. So I want to make it more reliable and consistent for you to be able to get fruits without having to use an automated setup and on a small scale. So that's why I'm going to try it going this way. For example, with the poo cakes, my previous experimentations were like this and it didn't really work out well. So I'm changing the game up right now. So as you can see all over, I have little holes all over poked by syringes. I just poked them all over, you know, just stabbed it all over the place, all throughout the bag and to recreate sort of a shotgun fruiting chamber type setup. And then also shotgun fruiting chamber has a bunch of perlite on the bottom. Now I didn't have perlite, but I will buy perlite before I go to the pool lovers, before I try it this way, because perlite has basically better evaporation. Right, compared to core. Core will make, like absorb a lot of water rather than just evaporate it. But this is what I had on hand and it's better than nothing. This will definitely work, for example, in a shotgun fruiting chamber or in this kind of setup if you're just trying to fruit core lovers because they don't, they're not nearly as finicky. But with, with grass lovers, uh, with, with, sorry, with Mexican grass lovers and pool lovers, I will definitely be using perlite because, because it's not just evaporation because by evaporating is not only going to increase the humidity it's going to increase the fresh air exchange because it's going to take all of the gases out as it evaporates and through the holes and then as it goes like that then it's going to also bring in some fresh air right go up pull in air to to make up for the displaced air and we're going to have some fresh air exchange through the evaporation so that's at least the idea that i'm going with right now and as you can see there are some very tangible results here. So this is the next step of my pool lover experiment as well. If you guys have been following my pool lover experiment to find an easy way to fruit pool lovers without having, um, you know, an automated tent or anything like that. Uh, it seems like I feel like we're making some progress here. I've got a bunch of trays right now that I made for pool lovers that I'm going to be testing out in this tech. So very exciting. And here's a little taster I want to show you guys right here. This is a Florida grass lover. And as you can see, there is one solitary fruit, which I don't want to show too much of, but there's also a lot of truffles, right? <laughs> In your auxiliary vision. <laughs> yeah, lots of truffles as well. So it's doing well, uh, just a solitary fruit, but these guys are, you know, I, I get that with shoe boxes sometimes as well. Sometimes they just don't produce fruit. They'll just produce a bunch of truffles, but yeah, that's the kind of thing that's going on right now. And I want to also show you two more examples of how you can use bags to fruit. So this is uh, inspired by Fat Steer from the, from the Esmery. And these guys are also Florida grass lovers. By the way, this is the uh, rehydrated grains. If you guys saw the rehydrated grains uh, experiment that I did a couple weeks ago, these guys are rehydrated. I opened it up like two to three times to shoot some, some uh, sterile water in there because they were so dry because of flash prep. Um, but anyways, I made these because I didn't have shoe boxes. So at the time, so basically uh, we can see some truffles forming. These guys though aren't fruiting as much. I just feel like there's just not enough FAE. But then again, it could also be the culture because this is also the first time I'm fruiting this culture. So untested culture basically. We did have one fruit coming up, but then it aborted. So clearly it's not ideal for fruiting. Uh, this is the same thing though, lots of holes, right? And it's very, very solid. Here, I wanna give you, I wanna show you guys how it sounds. Okay, here we go. Very acoustic, like a drum, a really nice sound, kind of a hollow thump. So uh, I don't know why I showed you guys that, but I thought it's interesting, it's pretty cool. So yeah, this, this thing is really solid. And the way that I made the shape is to basically hang it from my rack. Hang it from a rack, curl the ends there. Here, I, I'll show you guys. 
just like this, curling it from a rack. And uh, yeah, because um, the way the fat stir does it is basically he um, puts like a puts like a what was it like an eight like an eight cup container once he spawns it to bulk so that it's like a square shape and then he could just leave it he doesn't have to put it on a rack but I don't have that container I only only got like smaller containers like this so basically I just hung it on a rack and the rack made the shape and it is completely fine on its own it's a real you know unit now so that's how I'm doing it right now now I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of this tech these guys as far as I can see I don't have any cons I don't have any issues with it they're easy these guys I have no issue the the only cons that I've have faced so far is with this okay so first of all what are the cons well first of all you want to make sure you uh tape the sides like this because they're not naturally gusseted so you won't like get grains and stuff stuck in there that's pretty easy, right? But uh, but another con, but, but a true con is that it's small. So this is a quarter spawn. So basically you can't put much bulk in there, right? Cause you don't want a bit, you don't want it to be too thick, the substrate, cause that can inhibit fruiting. That could also uh, promote some nasty stuff to grow in the middle, you know? So this is a decent amount. And also it's kind of messy to open this up to mist. Uh, you get a lot of water pooling up on the sides. And then, so I would sort of go like this and then just like pour out some water. So yeah, it's sort of messy, uh, but uh, it's not all that bad guys. But one of the best things about it is that you could hang it up on a rack like this and you could ha you could really optimize your space. You could move this on the bottom rack and you could have like quite a few, like maybe four to five of them per section, you know? So you could really make use of your space if you don't have much fruiting space. This is a nice, easy way to optimize it. So, and here are some shoe boxes as well. So, I mean, shoe boxes as well fit pretty nicely as well. Obviously, if I could, I, I would prefer shoe boxes just because it's just less messy. Uh, it's nice and solid, so it's easy. But this absolutely works as well, and it's a great space saver. Yeah, guys, that's pretty much all that's going on right now. I got some poo lovers here. Got a bunch of bacterial stuff. I got some... Uh, you know, lots of uh, grass lovers producing truffles. And a lot of, and these guys are the trays that I'm gonna put, these are pool lover trays I'm gonna put to basically, um, once the casing layer is colonized, I'm gonna do bag fruiting with the core at the bottom, or I should say perlite soon. So I need to pick up some perlite guys. All right guys, that's pretty much all I wanna say. Hope you guys have a great day and night. Michael File Sage, checking out.